When your client suggests a nail style that you've never tried, what do you do? How do you handle it? Do you go for it? Do you say no? We're gonna talk about the situation right now on the Biz Talk. Do you like that intro? I kind of, it was, I felt like it was like sexy kind of, it's like on the biz talk. Like I'm driving down the freeway, Sunset Boulevard, Tracy, in my, my Stingray Corvette convertible, hair back, glasses, on biz talk. (laughs) Do you get that visual? I get that visual. Just visualize me puking right now. (laughs) Like my stomach just went like, like not just once, but like, like a lot of times. Was that sexy? (laughs) I say it. I said it. That's who says it. I'm just wondering because as it rolled off my tongue into the mic, sounds, the vibrations. Listen, Rico Suave. The boot juices and the berries. All right. Rico Suave. (laughs) Rico Suave. God, that was a hit. I remember that. Mm -hmm. All right. When your client walks in the door, I want to. I want to take this. Let me finish the sentence before I move on. Please, <laughs> Jesus, I have issues, man. All right, when the client walks in and they suggest a style mm-hmm. that you've never tried before, you know how do you handle this? Um, let's let's kind of take this because there's so many different things this could be, and I see this happening on the regular because nails is so big in terms of there are so many styles shapes shapes systems dip gel polish acrylic gel um you know what i'm saying and like on the most i i look at it in terms of um you know well well let me back it up you are not finishing sentences i know i know because like my mind is like already on other things let's start here there's I look at this as a couple different categories Tracy I look at it in I look at this in terms of there's gonna be the no sorry I don't do that right category yeah and then there's gonna be the shoot I should be doing that let me give it a whirl and see how this goes but generally um and and that's gonna come with like nail art and you know somebody comes in and they're like I want you know the I want the Van Gogh's starry night on my night. You're like, oh, whoa, 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 chill. But then there might be something where it's like, hey, I love coffin shape. You know, you've never done it. You know, can I get, and I know, okay, fine, it, you charge more. I, I want coffin shape. Can can you do that? How do you handle that? Okay, so you're right. There's so many different. So many. Things to be said here. Um, so first of all, if it is a common shape, Coffin, ballerina, stiletto, Stilettos. almond, round, square, square, s- tapered square. Um, <laughs> you should have those already practiced. Okay. Because more than likely, when a person comes in, it's going to be one of those shapes. So what if? Let me let me stop right there. Sorry. Just just to get a situation in. What if? You, okay, you should have that down. What if you don't? Yeah. And the client wants it. Do you just give it a go on there? And how do you how do you deal with that? I fully believe in being honest. So okay. of really like you know I don't have much call for that shape. Whether you do or not, that's what I would start start with. I don't have a lot of clients request that shape. I yeah. personally just haven't done it because no one's asked for it. Um, now I feel that uh, you know it, it it's a shape I can do. Um, so I'm going to, if you don't mind, we'll, we'll go for it. Um, I might have to ask you if there's anything that you see a little tweaks here and there. Um, but you know, is that okay with you now? Let's say it's something like a stiletto stiletto, you know, might not be all that common in salon, believe it or not. It's more common for us nail techs to wear them than sometimes than customers actually getting them. Totally makes sense. Okay. Um, it, though it is more popular now. now, um, but, uh, you know, uh, for a long time, it was just nail techs wearing it. Um, so if it's something you haven't done, like a stiletto, stiletto is, a, it's not just the shape, it's the structure. Mm. And if it's not structured correctly, we have a complete weight displacement. So I always typically say that the nail bed should be 51% and then your length should be 49% of the nail. 
Now, stilettos usually blow that out of the water because they're right. very, long. very long. So if they're not structured right, if they're not pinched right, typically they're going to break or they will look like a fat tello if you don't shape them right. Like there's, it's it's something that you need to have practice. Right. So if it's something like that, I would say, listen, I am so sorry. Um, I have not practiced that design. That design, that shape is very specific. It has to be done correctly. I am not comfortable doing that. Is there another shape that you would like? Now, all this should be avoided because you should have already asked them what they want. Beforehand. Beforehand. It Be- should not be a situation when they're sitting in a chair unless they've switched it on you. Right. I was going to say, maybe they came in and changed their mind. And they're like, oh my God, yeah. I know I said this, but yeah. can you do this? Yeah. So, 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 so <clears throat> two good points that you're making is number one, you've got to have your shaping game down. Mm-hmm. And if you don't, you know, be honest with your client, yep. right? Just let them know if they're willing to try and experiment. Cool. You know, that's great. Give it a shot. But, um, you got to go to work, yep. right? You got to go to work, get practice, get that down. And the second thing is, you know, make sure you communicate beforehand with your client so that you know what's coming through the door be- yep. to your point that you always make Tracy, which is you're scheduling them for a certain amount of time. If they go from square active to stilettos, which is a lot more time, now your books are screwed up. Books are screwed up. You're not comfortable doing it. And then there's there's certain shapes that they may think they know the name of it, but they don't. That's where the pictures come in play. Yeah. Like, please send me. Or they come in and they say, I want a short stiletto. <laughs> There's almond? no short. There's almond? no. There's no short stilettos. Yeah. You know. So you want a short almond that's sharper. Like so they have the. You know. Yeah. Everybody. You know. It's like when someone comes in and there's this beautiful artwork that picture that they said, but I want it on short nails. That's not going to look the same on short. On short yeah. nails. So, totally. Yeah. So that's where why them sending pictures and ideas and looking at your Instagram is so beneficial ahead yeah. of time. And so, what about like if you. Let's say you do gel polish, okay, but they want dip and, it. and you don't offer it. If you don't offer dip, I mean, is that something where you say, look, uh, let me get it in. I'm, I'm happy to experiment and bring in a system. Do you bring in a system for one or two clients? Do you like say, and then maybe expand your, um, your service menu? Is that like, how would you approach that? Again, it just depends on, um, am I needing to expand my clientele that got way. Got it, got is it. Is that becoming a more and more common thing? Yeah, you should get it in. Is it, I'm just filling a spot that I just happened to open on a waiting list and do I yeah. really want to get a whole new system and learn a whole new system just for this one person? I'm not too sure on that one. Um, but yeah. again, it shouldn't be a conversation that you're having in front of you because it should have already been discussed what they are wanting. Ahead of time. So... What if something is trendy though? Like if if you see, because we saw like last whatever four or five years, dip powder went through the ceiling, yeah. right? And every, I mean, I would talk to um, friends, and they're they're just like, oh, I love dip, and like every, I was like consumers talking about dip. If you saw that trend coming, you know, and maybe you were getting more and more questions from clients, yeah. um, even existing clients that are like, let's say they're all getting gel polish, but like a large number of them were like, well, I would like to try dip. I mean, would, would you then go, you know what, it's worth me exploring and checking it out? Yeah. I mean, again, if I have a full clientele and then some people are needing dip, they're needing that more structure, need more strength, mm-hmm. because again, the look mm-hmm. in the end kind of looks the same same right so if they're needing that yes so now good. what i don't want to do is buy a bunch of product that's going to sit in my drawer and get bad so that's where you have to make that decision is so it good. something that i need is it something that i'm going to get in and start pushing the clients and my clients are needing it yeah i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to go get it that i mean that's the key right like and, and it's again this is something that you always talk about you're the pro mm-hmm. you have to determine what they need yeah. so if it's if it's a trend that's coming in and out it's good to educate your clients and say hey look dip and and gel polish have the same look some people actually need that extra structure and dip powder you are not one of those clients right. trust me you don't need it there's no your your gel polish lasts great on you we we remove it every two three weeks your health your nails are, are perfectly healthy there's no there's no reason to go to dip, you know, because mm-hmm. the look is the same. That's huge. Yeah. 
you know, because what if then you go to dip and for whatever reason, it's not working on them. It's like, oh my God, why, why are you trying to fix something that ain't broke? Exactly. You know? I mean, just because they heard someone else is trying it. It's yeah. like, and that's just part of the education of like what it looks like, what the cost is. The cost is the same. What, what is your goal for switching? Right. What's your goal for switching? These yeah. are, these so I'm not against important. It. I just need to know. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if there are, let's say you do need clients, right? Let's say your books aren't full and you get in a bunch of clients where you're noticing, shoot, they, their, their nail beds are not as strong. Maybe they do need dip. They're asking for dip. Dip might work better. At that point, would you be like, this is probably something I should I should consider. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, absolutely. And and I probably personally, I would probably have a clear dip on, I would have our slick pour under the radar on hand with the mm. uh, the resin system just for people that need the ad- added strength underneath gel polish. Um, and then I would also have the colors because I use them for color and acrylic. So I would have it there. there. But if it was something that I uh, was literally having to go purchase, I would have to really decide how that's going to benefit my business and would you go traditional dip or would you go dip with gel i personally love uh dip com- with gel yeah yeah yeah, yeah. the con- conversion. conversion yeah i like it too yeah. i like it too because yeah. i can actually strength. do it yeah. i can actually do it trace you can do resin <laughs> you can do that too. i've never i've actually never done yeah. resin shoot maybe we should do yeah, anyway that's a that. whole different topic like we should do a video where you teach me how to do resin system oh yes yeah, it's pretty easy yeah easy yeah. but that that's that's the whole thing now now you have also the situation talking about trends like there's shapes that are trendy mm. right and um and i'm not racking on any style because there is a customer out there for any style any look so i love stilettos some people hate stilettos and that's cool yeah um but there has been trends that have come in and out that i just didn't want to do like what bubble nails oh, yeah. duck bill nails <laughs> uh flared nails it, i just i didn't need it for my clientele i had a clientele so and it wasn't a huge demand for it where i was now again i might have rethought it if that's what everybody wanted and i needed clientele, need clientele. again no. i'm not racking on those looks if that's your style and you ha- i guarantee you have customers that love it that's cool. I love stilettos. You probably hate them. Um, and that's cool too. That's why I always say there's clientele for every, every look. Yeah. I personally just said I'm not doing those trends. Yeah. Um, no, I like that. I, I, it, it's it, your approach to nails. is it's very, very, very logical, you know, and it's like, what does the client need? Um, and that dictates, your decision making process yeah. is like client need like it's the ultimate customer service right it's like exactly. and i'm going to educate the client i'm going to give my expertise but i'm not going to give them something they don't need or try to sell them something just because it's trendy like what do they need and then the same thing with these styles okay is are are, are you 30 percent booked and you're 70 percent empty on your on your books and then you have a wave of let's say six or seven people that want duck bill okay Maybe you don't like it, but is this something that you yeah. you do to you know keep your business going? And then as you fill in clients, you can start to dictate what what nails you want to do more. Like it it's got to be based, like it's supply demand, it's customer need. It's there's so many factors yeah. that play into this, yeah. right? And we all do nails that sometimes we don't want to do. For I, sure, I got tired of pink and whites. I didn't want to do another pink and whites. I was sick of them, hated them at that point. And you I had a clientele do that wanted them still, yeah. and so I still did them. So you know, there, there's nothing wrong with that. And uh, but um. It's exactly what you got to, you got to look at it from a business point of view. Business point of view. I think that's huge. And then, um, I'm, I'm assuming this is kind of going to follow along the same sort of path because it's nice. It's almost like you have a, you, you put in like a system of how to approach these different situations, you know? Yeah. So like, I feel like I'm learning like, yeah, I'm a tech man. I'm in the salon. I'm make decisions right now. And I know what decision to make. Nail art would be the same thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> like there's so many different kinds of nail art there's instagram there's facebook there's there's tiktok customers walk in i want this you know you're like i don't really know or like you're gonna approach the same way right like yo first of all i'm gonna be honest with you i can't do that that's not something you don't want me to do you that. don't want me to do that here's what i can do yeah. maybe kind of walk them through but um, you would approach the same way, right? Like if somebody wanted, you always you always give the example of uh, you know little baby Jesus in the manger and growing up, through growing childhood. up through childhood, <laughs> like full manger and yeah. 
they want that painting on their uh, nails and, and that's just not what you do, right? And you it's, would communicate that to clients. I, absolutely. Like, it, you know, and again, this is not a conversation we're having in front of us anymore because we have communication prior. What kind of art are you looking for? Please go to yeah. my Instagram, look at the kind of art that I do. I'm not a hand painter. I admit that. Can I, Now, if I was in a situation where that's what everybody wanted, that I need to learn it or I'm not going to have a job, I would probably learn how to right. have the patience to learn how to do that right. stuff. Um, I would feel bad for the first couple cu customers, <laughs> but I, I mean, I, I have painted, you know, flowers and stuff like that. Cause there was a part, you know, time that I just don't enjoy it. And yeah. it's not the look that I like. Right. Um, and, uh, patience is a huge thing. I just don't have patience for it. If I needed to have patience, I would learn how to have patience for it. But yeah. again, not a conversation we're having in front of the front. Yeah. I think, I think the, um, so much of success in, in your nail business depends on transparency, being honest, mm -hmm. not like I think you, where you can get into trouble is like where people are they're scared to tell their clients no. Like I want to give them everything they want. And you just say, OK, yeah, 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 I can do that. And then you 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 do it and maybe it's you haven't practiced it. So you're not good at it. And they're left with like something on their nails and the clients now pissed off, not happy has to pay for it and doesn't come back. Yeah. Right? Yep. Like So here's the thing. We are afraid that they're going to be pissed off, and not happy and not come back because we said we told them no. Right. Which way are they going to be more pissed off about? Oh my god. If you're honest and upfront, you can literally you're I'm trying to save you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't do that to you, you know, and um but again, again, this is why it's so important to communicate prior got to communicate prior transparency and even if they do walk in where it's a situation yeah. of like you know i've i i on the way here driving in my car to stop lot i saw this yeah can we do this you know whatever that change of mind is um you got to be honest and just transparent and then maybe you see something right i this could totally happen to me where like I don't do a particular type of like nail art, but then my client shows me and I'm like, wow, I actually am inspired and I let me, I want to learn that. Maybe that happens and you, but you still tell your client, look, I don't do that, but I'm actually inspired. This is pretty cool. Give me a little bit of time. Let me, yeah. let me, let me mess with this a little bit. Let me see what I can do. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Like we can't do that this time, but I'm going to practice that a couple, when I have some free time and, um, Hopefully I'll be able to, I'll let you know, you, you know, for your next appointment, if we're able to do it. I, I, I give this example all the time. Never in a million years did I ever think I could, uh, make content, you know, talk, whether it's live or in front of a camera, do vlog. I never, ever imagined. Yeah. And like, but it was something that I felt like our business needed. Right, Tracy. Yep. And so I forced myself because you were just talking about this right now. Like if I thought my business needed it and everybody wanted it, would I do it? Yes, I would learn it. That's what I did. And it was really hard and it sucked for a long time up to when we did the first vlog. But now I, we make the joke. It's like, is there a camera? I'm in front of it. You know, I'm, I'm totally comfortable. I love it now. It's so much fun. I didn't know I enjoyed it doing this yeah. but same thing with you yeah. right you didn't realize because you weren't making content either and now no. like but it's it's fun right it, you got comfortable it got comfortable and that's i think that's the problem sometimes is where like you know what i went through that uncomfortable stage yeah when i first got out of school and i don't want to be back there but when your business calls for it you gotta you gotta go you eat, or or yeah, you, you gotta, gotta go it. you yeah. gotta go out of business right right <laughs> either you gotta go or you got to go. Yeah. Like it's one of those things you, you got to, what I mean by that is like, you got to go, you got to get moving, get it done, or you, you got to go, you're out of business. Yeah. Like that's how I always look at, I never thought <laughs> so many things in this business. I never thought I could do out of force. You, it's amazing as a, as a human being, you can, uh, what you can actually do and accomplish, you know, by forcing yourself. And I think that's a huge thing for you if your business needs it. Um, let us know in the comments below your experience we'd love to hear about it and i'm sure it'll help many people as well with this situation clients coming in and asking for stuff and do you do it do you not do it how do you handle it also any ideas for future episodes let us know in the comments below thank you so much tracy thank you thank you guys for joining us we will see you next time on the biz talk